Hey, think fast. Oh! Oh! What'd you do that for? So that you'd learn, dummy. Good morrow and welcome to Pro Photo Tips. My name is Josh Cripps and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. I'm sharing seven of the best life lessons that I've learned by being a photographer. One of those is sometimes in order to really learn, your lessons have to hurt. I'm lucky in that I'm a good student. Sit me down with a textbook or a teacher and I can learn just about anything. But the problem I found with that kind of academic learning is that it's temporary. The knowledge comes into my brain, bounces around for a little while, and then six months later it flutters out my ear or my nose or something. I'm not really sure how it gets out, but I do know that it's gone. But you know what kind of knowledge does stick around? The kind that is painfully gained. If some lesson hurt you to learn it, then I guarantee you're gonna hold that lesson dear for a long time to come. Let me give you an example. When I was living in LA and just starting out with photography, I spent a lot of time exploring the southern part of the Palos Verdes coast around Abalone Cove. In spring of 2008, I went out for a couple of nights in a row to experiment with some night photography. So I cranked the ISO on my trusty old Nikon D50 to a whopping 1600 and took some really awful photos. The next night I was in more of a seascape mood, so I hit the beach, found this rock, and created this composition. Being fairly inexperienced with photography and seascapes, I was pretty happy with what I thought was a novel composition, some interesting motion in the water, and decent light and drama in the sky. In other words, I had a keeper, and I couldn't wait to process this shot into a little bit of magic once I got home. But once I actually pulled the image up on my computer, I discovered to my horror that I had left my ISO at 1600 from the previous nights. And on the D50, 1600 ISO pretty much looks like you just took a Brillo pad and scrubbed your sensor with it. Here's a close-up of the image. You can see how much of the detail is obscured by noise. Crap! My amazing photo! Ruined! Well, you can bet that since that night, I have double and triple checked my ISO before every single shoot. Here's another more tragic example. Yes, that is my camera falling lens first onto a rock. A first person glimpse into a $750 blink of an eye equipment loss. But you know what? That $750 lesson has stuck with me and now I always make sure my tripod is perfectly level and secure before I take my hands off of it. These kinds of mistakes suck. They hurt, they're expensive, and they wound your pride. But the moral of the story here is not to be afraid to make them or even to fail spectacularly because those failures and mistakes will teach you stronger and more enduring lessons than a constant string of successes will. As always, thanks for watching. You can see more in this series here. For lots of free photo tips, answers to your questions, cool photos and more, check out the Pro Photo Tips newsletter. And for the best in-depth photography and processing tutorials on the web, head over to the Nature Photography Academy. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.